is a mechanized semantics and verified compilation for a data flow synchronous language with reset. And uh, the talk will be by Lelio Brun. So, um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to present a PhD work I did with uh, Timothy Burke and uh, Marc Pousset. And this is part of a project called Velus, which is avail available online. So first, a bit of uh, context. So here's a screenshot of the SCADE tool that is used to develop safety critical applications, such as uh, monitoring software in power plants or aircraft control software. And this is a typical engineering tool where blocks represent uh, systems whose inputs and outputs are connected by lines that represent signals. And we are interested in the mathematical model of these systems that interact over time. So it is natural to use uh, uh, composition of functions over infinite streams. And behind this uh, graphical interface, there is an actual programming language that extends uh, the academic language Lust. And such languages can be compiled into sequential programs for execution on uh, embedded platforms. So the novelty of our work is to take this uh, sometimes called model-based design languages and to reason about their compilation algorithm, algorithms into interactive theorem provers like Coq. So our challenges here are to uh, first mechanize their semantic models, which are quite different from imperative languages, and two, to prove their compilation correct. And in this work, we focus on a, a, a specific construct, which is called the modular reset, and I will describe it uh, uh, shortly. But first, let's see an example of the source language. So the diagram on the left and the code on the right describe the same object. The Euler node is a function over streams that has two inputs, x0 and u, and one input, x. It is defined by a single uh, equation that implements a forward Euler integration scheme where arithmetic operators operate pointwise over streams, and the followed by operator represents a unit delay. So we can represent the semantics of this node using what we call a chronogram that associates uh, variables and expressions to streams. And in this chronogram, we fix the input streams uh, x0 and u, and we consider the successive values of the expression x plus 0.1 times u that are calculated at each instant of time. And for x, that is defined uh, with a follow by, the initial value comes from uh, x0, and then the, the other values are equal to the previous stream uh, delayed by one cycle. Um, so here is a more complex system where the code from the previous slide is uh, instantiated. So this time the INS node represents a simple inertial navigation system where the Euler node is used to compute the position x for 50 steps, then x is frozen and the alarm fires. And uh, we, uh, the, the Euler node is activated on sampled inputs when the alarm is false and using the when keyword, and this corresponds to the xe row in the chronogram, where holes at the end represent absence of value. And pxa is a previous value of x sampled when the alarm is false, when the alarm is true, sorry. And finally, x is a combination of the two complementary uh, substreams defined using the merge keyword. And one important detail is that reordering the uh, equations does not change the meaning of the node. Uh, more advanced applications uh, combine the use of uh, data flow equations with hierarchical state machines. Here, the initial GPS mode, in this mode, the position x is taken directly from the GPS signal. And in the fallback INS mode, the position is integrated from the velocity using the last known GPS uh, position as initial value. And this initial value has to be reset on modern tree. So normally, the state machines are compiled by rewriting them into simpler constructs, and the data flow operators that I just showed you almost suffice, but we also need a way to reset the state of the, uh, of the nodes when a mode is re-entered. So one possibility is to add uh, an explicit reset input to every node, and to uh, add uh, conditionals around all the follow bys as you can see here in highlights. But this is not modular, and this generates poor sequential code. Right? 
So uh, a better solution is to define uh, a speci uh, specific construct that allows an node instance to be reset. And so this way, the existing code is not changed, and the reset is specified only at uh, the call site. And uh, SCAID has such an operator with the syntax that is shown here. And here on the left, you can see the graphical counterpart in SCAID. And in fact, this operator is not just a SCAID thing. It's also uh, proposed by the Simulink tool, which is another uh, widespread uh, model-based design tool. And this is because the, the modular reset operator is not just used to compile state machines. It's interesting by itself. And in fact, there are relatively few formal definitions of this operator. And we found that none of them were ideal to use uh, within a, a proof assistant. So to, to give, even if the, 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 the semantics is intuitively easy to describe. And so we are going through a simple example to give the intuition of the modular reset. So this node outputs uh, successive integers starting from uh, i. And we are going to uh, compare the behavior of this NAT node with and without uh, reset. So at first, there is no reset. So we start counting from 0, which is the initial value of i, 0, 1. And then there is a reset. So the followed by is re initialized to the current value of i, that is 10. And then we, oh, sorry. And then we, we resume counting from 10, that is 11, 12. And there is another uh, reset. So 25, 26, and so on and so forth. And in fact, I remark that the overall reset outputs corresp output corresponds to the concatenation of uh, the outputs of new instances of NAT created each time uh, the reset is true. And this can, could be expressed directly into a higher order recursive language. But this is forbidden because we have to guarantee statically that the code runs in bounded, bounded time and memory. Still, we can use this ID to formalize the semantics of the reset by infinitely unrolling the, the recursion. So we define a, a count operator that is a cumulative sum of the reset ticks over time and a mask operator that takes a stream i, a reset stream r, and an instance number 0 here. And what it does is that it lets uh, values of i go through only when uh, the instance number is equal to the value of count. Otherwise, it is absent. And now, if I apply night on this must input, I get this, because nodes do not react when their inputs uh, are absent. And this output corresponds, corresponds to a slice in the, in the overall reset uh, output. And I can repeat this process for the instance number one, and the instance number two, and infinitely. And when I merge all the, the outputs uh, together, I get back the uh, overall reset uh, output. And this can be expressed directly into COC. So first, let's see the semantics of a uh, standard uh, uh, node instantiation without reset. So x equal f of v, where x is a list of variables and uh, e a list of expressions. It is parameterized by um, h that represents the kind of chronograms that you've seen on the previous slides. Uh, that is, it's uh, a map from uh, identifiers to streams. So the semantics of the list of expression E is a list of streams ES. There is a predicate for the semantics of uh, the node F that relates input streams ES to output streams XS. And the variables X must be associated in H to the same XS. Now for the reset on the variable Y, uh, the premises about uh, expressions and variables are unchanged. And we add premises to uh, associate the variable y to a stream rs that is projected into a boolean stream r. And we add a uh, universal quantification over the semantics of the node. And in fact, this uh, universal quantif quantification together with the mask operator express an, in an embodied number of constraints over the streams. That is, uh, the streams excess are constrained to be the concatenation that I showed on the, on the previous slide uh, informally. So now that we have a semantic for the reset, we can uh, use it to show that the extended compiler is correct. So here is the previous architecture of, the, of our Velus compiler that is implemented in Coq and a bit of OCaml for the front end. So first, we parse the source file. We add the type and clock uh, annotations. And uh, then we scheduled, we scheduled the normalized uh, Lust code to fix the order of computations. 
we generate code into uh, the uh, intermediate imperative language that we call OPSI. Uh, then the code is uh, optimized by the fusion optimization to minimize uh, branching. And then uh, we generate code in uh, c -Lite, which is a, a, a front-end language of Concert, the verified C compiler. And Concert generates assembly code. So now let's see uh, why this uh, scheme is not ideal when we use the uh, modular reset. So this, in this example, the driver node instantiates uh, the INS node twice with the same reset condition. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the scheme, in the compilation scheme to OPC, uh, a class is generated for each node. And a class can have state variables and sub-instances, here x and y of class INS. And two methods are generated. A reset method that uh, recursively reinitialize the state of, uh, of the instance by resetting all its state variables to the initial value, and a step method that computes one cycle of the execution. And here, each modular, each modular reset is translated into a guarded call to the reset method, followed directly by a call to the step method for each equation. But the problem is that the two generated uh, uh, conditionals are not adjacent, and so they will not be factorized by the subsequent fusion optimization. So we could reorder the OPSI statements, but the required uh, correctness proof would be very tedious because of the imperative semantics, while it is absolutely free in our data flow model because it does not depend on the order of the equation. So we need uh, an intermediate representation where, uh, we, where we could uh, perform a finer scheduling that would take uh, resets into account. So STC for synchronous transition code is our solution. So its semantics is invariant under permutations. That is, it doesn't depend on the order of the equations. It treats the reset separately from the instantiations. And the state is explicit, like in OPSI, with the state variables and instances. And so we adapt our compilation scheme by adding STC between uh, normalized lustre and OPSI. And we'll see how it works on the example. So first, uh, 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 an STC system is generated for each node, and it can have uh, state variables and, uh, and uh, subsystems here, x and y. And uh, two transitions are uh, generated. One is implicit, the so reset transition, so it just recursively uh, set all the all the state variables to their initial values, and a default transition that is explicit, and it's made of what we call transition constraints that are generated from the loose equations. So here, each modular reset is translated into a pair of transition constraints, that is a default transition on the substance of the subsystem and a reset transition. Now we can schedule STC. And here, the only constraint is that the reset transitions must occur before the step transitions. And so we can group the two resets together. Then we generate OPSI, and this is pretty straightforward because uh, the structure is preserved. And so the transitions are transformed into uh, methods. And uh, each transition constraint becomes uh, a statement. And you can see that now the two generated conditionals are adjacent, and they will be uh, factorized by the subsequent uh, fusion optimization that uh, generates uh, better code. Now let's see how uh, STC works uh, intuitively. So it describes transition systems. And uh, a default transition constrains a start state S and an end state S prime, as specified by its uh, transition constraints. And to model the reset transition, we use a notion of local transition state I. That is intuitively the, the state that the memory can take, that the memory takes just after a reset and just before a step within one synchronous instant. So uh, on our example, uh, imagine that uh, the default transition of the, of the driver system is uh, activated with R equal to true. So this transition constrains S with S prime. And locally, for the subsystem X and similarly for Y, uh, this transition is decomposed into two parts. So the first part constrains uh, the substate S, Sx with a transient state Ix. And since R is true, the reset transition of INS on X constrains IX to, be, uh, to contain only initial values for all its state variables. And then uh, IX is constrained with uh, S prime X, the sub 
and state for x uh, by the default transition uh, on ANS. And on the other hand, if R is false, then Ix is uh, simply constrained to be equal to uh, Sx. And uh, then Ix and S'x has, are constrained as before. So in fact, each default transition contains such a transient state, but they are not visible from the outside. So now let's see um, the, the proof of correctness. So the goal is to show the preservation of the semantics along the successive passes of the, of the, of the compiler. So we have a semantics for uh, normalized boost. We have a semantics for STC. But a direct proof by induction could not be done. So we introduced uh, an alternative uh, model for NLUST where the state is explicit. Uh, that is uh, the memory. And then uh, the proof goes by induction. Scheduling only permutes the transition constraint. So in fact, the, the semantics is unchanged. And then the generation of OPSI code is proved by induction again. And those proofs are uh, composed to show the overall uh, uh, correctness result of Velus that states that uh, if the compilation of the raw, raw program uh, D with main node F succeeds producing an elaborated normalized loose program G and the compiled assembly program P, and if the semantics of F, the node F, relates input streams access to output streams YS, then we know that P, the compiled program, reacts, that is, it runs forever, producing an infinite trace of events, T, that alternates, sorry, that alternates volatile reads of values of XS with volatile writes of values of YS. And uh, the overall uh, correctness proof is a composition of all the proofs of, 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 of the passes. And the ones in, uh, in black are those that are unchanged by uh, the addition of the modular reset. So to conclude, I presented a, a verified compiler for Lust with a reset. And we managed to adapt our formalization to add a single uh, semantic rule for the reset. And we introduced STC, a uh, new intermediate uh, representation that uh, uh, allows us to produce reasonable code for the reset and uh, uh, to model uh, transient states. And so the modular reset is only the first step towards the mechanization of uh, uh, state machines that is uh, the focus of ongoing work in, uh, in the Velus project. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for your talk. Um, so when, uh, when using model-based design, the programmer is working with uh, diagrams and visual stuff. Um, but your mechanization is at the level of a the textual level, it, you know, it looks like a conventional programming language. Um, should we be concerned about that mismatch? Sorry, what was the, the, the Should we be concerned about the mismatch between what you formalized and what the programmer actually works with? In fact, uh, in SCAD, the, 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 the engineer uh, can have access to the loose, to the loose based code. And um, I don't know if really there is a, a connection. I mean, if you the, there is a, there is a, a transformation from the graphical syntax to the, to the textual syntax, but not the other way around, I think. And so once you, once you gave up the graphical syntax, you're just with the, with the, with the loose program. But uh, I don't know really, I don't know to give, uh, for me, it's, it's a graphical syntax. It's just another syntax on the same object. No, I agree that uh, there could be a mismatch, but the, I mean, this is just the, the way, the, 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 the meaning of the, of the graphical syntax is the, the textual syntax. It's, it's how it's defined. I, I, I don't know how, how to give a semantics to, to the drawing. Are there other questions? Uh, I'm not sure I understood at some point for the proof of correctness of your first pass. You mentioned that you couldn't go by induction, but that interesting memories helps you go by induction. Can you just elaborate on what you meant? This? Yes, the very first pass for you. Uh, so, uh, oh, yes, yeah, the, in the introduction of the alternative uh, memory model. Right. Okay, in fact, uh, this model was introduced before we uh, introduced STC. 
and it was introduced uh, for proving the generation of OPC code directly from uh, normalized Lustre. And it's because uh, you can't even uh, write the statement of correctness because when you when you want to do your induction about uh, uh, the transformation of equation and uh, and, uh, and uh, OPC statement, you will want to give a specification of what you have in the memory in, uh, in OPC, and uh, there's no way to relate it into uh, into Lust because Lust has no notion of memory. Uh, for the for the memory uh, here. No, because you uh, we 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 give a, uh, we gi the memory here is just a description of uh, of uh, of what the state variables will have. Uh, it's just a, a, a tree that is constrained uh, by the semantics. But uh, it I mean it does not uh, it it is not uh, the semantics is not operational. So this is just a set of constraints. Where in OPC, it's, uh, it's an, it's an, uh, an operational uh, semantics that describes uh, uh, successive uh, transformation of the memory. So I have one last question. So you talked about a formalization of semantics and a compiler that preserves semantics. But are there tools for the users to prove properties of their source programs in Lustre? And are those tools proved sound? Uh, yes, that's. Um, that's one goal uh, of, uh, of the project at the end, to have a way to uh, represent in our framework uh, a, a, a program and this program to prove some properties on it to show that they are preserved. But for now, uh, there, there exist uh, model, uh, model checking tools for NLUST, but uh, this is too separate a world for now uh, uh, relatively to our, our work. Right. Thank you. <laughs>